it turns out this particular disk drive has been corrupting any disks that are not right protected. Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and welcome to part two of the Apple IIc restoration. Um, now I did finally pick up a new camera and for anyone interested it is a Sony ZV-1 so um, we'll see how that goes. That's what I'm currently filming on at the moment. Um, in terms of the Apple IIc, I have been busy at work creating little modifications and upgrades, um, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, but there was a bigger issue uh, in testing these upgrades that I had to deal with first. Now, last time I mentioned that the disk drive uh, was a little bit iffy and it turns out the problem is actually worse than I suspected. Um, and it doesn't seem to be a mechanical problem as such. Uh, I was thinking that the belts were bad or it was out of alignment or the speed was off because um, certain disks weren't working while others were. And I did manage to narrow it down to a certain type of disk uh, that would work and a certain one that wouldn't. So for example, this BeagleWrite software um, booted up just fine but something like an ADT Pro boot disk didn't work, um, even though this was only created by Jason recently, I believe. So it was something very odd. Uh, and I obviously I wanted to use ADT Pro to actually write some software to some blank disks, and that did not work out. And after some further digging, I think I know what the issue is. I'm just not sure how to fix it. So before we get to check out these upgrades, we've got to repair the disk drive once and for all, hopefully. So um, let's get straight into that. All right, so I'll try and explain what's going on. Um, so if we try with the ADT Pro boot disk, which in theory should work, it just gives us check disk drive, which is what I was getting before with a lot of disks. Now the BeagleWrite disk uh, the first side probably won't actually work and I'll get to that in a second. So side A doesn't work. However, it did previously work not too long ago. If I stick in side B, it'll give me an error unable to load ProDOS. So it is actually reading side B, but because I haven't booted it from side A, can't get any further. Now, watch what happens when we take the right protect off side B. Reboot. Check disk drive. So it worked fine just a second ago and as soon as we remo remove that right protect tab, we get that check disk drive error. Now you would think that just replacing that right protect tab will solve our issues, but check disk drive. It turns out this particular disk drive has been corrupting any disks that are not right protected. And me just inserting a disk without the right protect tab covered up um, has corrupted that disk. So I've tested quite a few different disks not knowing that that was the issue and chances are I've corrupted a whole bunch of disks. Now this isn't going to be a big issue because I think all this software is available out there online somewhere. So it's not like it's lost forever. It's just that I need to repair this disk drive um, so we can get back to actually creating these disks. So obviously I'm going to try and recreate this Beagle Write disk using ADT Pro, hopefully, if I ever get it up and running. And if I can find a copy of this disk online, I should be able to just rewrite it. So why is this happening? Obviously the write protect mechanism is actually working. So if the disk is write protected, it's not going to try and write to it. However, if the disk is not write protected, even when it first boots and tries to read from it, it appears that it's writing something to it instead, and therefore it corrupts the disk. I mean, most of the actual information is still probably on the disk. 
it's just the very first sector that goes to it it must override it and after that we can't read back from it anymore um so that is kind of annoying um in saying that it's something that we need to repair so you know i love repairing stuff so i'm i'm happy to have a go at it so um where do we begin well that is the question all right so i had a look around online and i found the apple 2c service manual which i already sort of knew about uh, but it also turns out sam's computer facts did a book on the apple 2c which is which is awesome because i really do like these books they give you an idea of um what things should look like on an oscilloscope or even a logic probe so we're gonna have a look at the IWM or integrated WAS machine and see if we can work out from there um, if there's an issue with that particular IC or even something along the chain. So the IWM is right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually disconnect the disk drive because um, in theory, we shouldn't need that just to probe the the chip itself so for this test the ic is labeled ud2 in the computer facts guide and it's got a handy little chart that you can just step through from pin 1 to pin 28 and what signals you should expect to see on the scope so starting from pin 1 the first thing we should see is it is high which it is it's sitting at 5 volts so i'm guessing that's probably power in Although I don't see a big thick trace, but it could be on the other side of the board. Um, anyway, let's just go through the pins, see if we see anything unusual. Otherwise, we'll have a look at the disk drive itself and see if there's any unusual things going on. Um, maybe some of these logic chips have gone bad. I, yeah, at this point, we don't know. But um, So pin one is high. That looks good. And... Pin 2 is low, which matches up, so I'll just keep going through these and we'll stop if we find something odd. So, pin 9 is supposed to be high according to this guide, and... Yeah, we're just getting low, no voltage. So pin 9 could be worth looking into a little bit closer. Let's just keep going, see if there's anything else. So pin 20 should also read high and we're getting low on that as well. So pin 9 and pin 20 are not correct. I'm just going to try and hook up the disk drive. Unfortunately, I've run out of bench space, so I'm just going to have to hold on to the disk drive. <laughs> try and do this one-handed. Right, let's have another look at pin 9. So pin 9 is still low, whereas Apparently it should be high and 15, 16, 17, 18. pin 20 is now high. So maybe it was just because I had the disk drive unplugged. I suppose we can test that theory. So now it's low. So yeah, I think it's just because the disk drive wasn't plugged in, but pin nine seems to be just sitting low regardless so i guess let's take a closer look at what pin 9 
uh, actually connects to and what it's supposed to do. Alright, so according to the guide, pin 9 is labeled as WRREQ, which I guess would mean write request. And it's normally supposed to be high, so I guess when it's low, anytime we put a disk in that is not write protected, I'm guessing it's allowing the disk drive to try and write to it. Um, so obviously the, the write protect sensor is working, because um, that's stopping anything from being written. But if that's not there, then it's just allowing something to be written to the disk before even uh, managing to read from it. So let's have a closer look here. All right, so here's our suspect right here. And yeah, it's incredibly obvious straight away that work has been done. Maybe this has been replaced and the replacement one's gone bad, or maybe they've possibly broken a trace. Um, yeah, I think to start with, I'm just going to try and reflow these joints and um, see if that makes it any better. All right, so I'll just start by adding some flux. And yes, I do need to get a proper syringe for this, but this will do for now. Okay, let's see if that made any difference. All right, so in theory, we should read five volts or thereabouts off pin nine. We're still getting zero. So yeah, it would appear that either there's an issue with this chip or there's an issue with the computer fax guide and maybe that's normally low. Um, but I think they're pretty accurate from what I've found. Um, yeah. So I'll do a closer inspection on the board see if there's something else that's happened. Possibly when this chip was replaced, they might have damaged something else. So I'll keep poking around and see if we can find anything else before we call this chip bad for sure. All right, so here's the thought. After poking around a little bit, um, pin nine is almost directly connected to ground. There's only three point something ohms between them. So it's not a dead short to ground, but it is pretty close. So it's possible something um, is shorted somewhere else on the board, just enough to pull that pin low constantly. So what I'm going to try and do is just desolder that particular pin and see if I can get a little bit of heat shrink around it just to isolate it. Um, and see if that short goes away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to remove the whole thing. Um, I think it's still making contact with the actual um, the through hole, so. I'm going to remove this whole chip and see if that short goes away or at least that very low resistance. <laughs> nice. No damage, no pads lifted, everything looks to be intact. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this one here was 
basically shorting to ground. And if I bring this in, nothing. So we've removed our short to ground, which means the short is internal to this chip, which is a pity. Um, so you can see from the board that the last pin, pin 14, uh, is connected to ground. So if we go on the chip from pin 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and there's that 3 ohms. So there's an sh internal short on pin 9 to ground, which means this is fucked. Ah. So unfortunately, we're going to have to leave the Apple IIc here. Uh, without a working floppy disk drive, there's not a lot I can do. And it's a shame because I did have some other mods that I wanted to take a look at. But yeah, if anyone knows where I can find one of these chips, um, let me know in the comments down below. I, I had a look on eBay and came up with nothing. Uh, I would like to send a big thanks to Jason, aka Mr. Lurch, for this project. Uh, even though it's not working now, I'm sure we'll get it working in the future. So until then, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, blah, blah, blah. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. <sighs> Damn. Hmm.